Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be discussing some really exciting discoveries when it comes to true limits of life on planet Earth. And specifically in regards to this organism you see behind me that once again surprised biologists by basically surviving in extremely hot conditions that is completely unexpected and once again breaks previous models and previous explanations. With all of this helping us answer certain fundamental questions in regards to the origins of life, but also in helping us understand how life is able to survive certain extremely tough conditions that we actually thought was impossible. And so let's talk about this new discovery of this very strange amoeba. Described in this study you can find in the description, focusing on exactly what science has discovered about it and why at first it didn't really make sense. But I guess let's start with the obvious. We know that life can indeed survive some really extreme conditions and we even have a term for this type of life. We usually call these types of organisms extremophiles. Basically lovers of extreme. Um, get your head out of the gutter. This is not the kind of a channel. And in the last few decades scientists discovered these types of organisms living in some really bizarre environments. But there's always been a kind of a limitation when it comes to what kind of life we usually find here. Normally this was basically the realm of bacteria and archaea. Organisms lacking nucleus and organisms very different from eukaryotes such as ourselves and basically organisms that were just very ancient and very primitive. Obviously things like this amoeba we're discussing today does not actually qualify. This is also a eukaryote containing very complex structure and so technically it should not survive in extreme conditions. And the reason why most eukaryotes cannot survive these extreme conditions is really because of all of this internal complexity and specifically various structures that involve delicate proteins such as for example actins simply cannot handle the most punishing conditions and especially extreme heat. As you know, many proteins basically start to denature and become completely useless. But this recent discovery, of course, sort of shatters this conventional wisdom and basically requires us to rethink all of this. Turns out that some eukaryotic life can indeed survive extreme conditions. And so the subject of our discussion today is this. A newly discovered species of amoeba or a single cell organism belonging to a complex group of life that has now been named Incendia amoeba Cascadensis, literally meaning fire amoeba of the cascades. And as in previous biological discoveries, this was once again completely accidental. Here researchers were trying to explore the world of complex extremophiles, but they were mostly looking for bacteria. And so they collected samples from geothermally active regions very close to Northern California in a location referred to as the Lassen Volcanic National Park. And so these were actually found in California and not in some remote locations in the Atlantic. And while the surprising discovery in this case was of course the high temperatures at which this organism doesn't just survive but actually thrives. Here Incendio amoeba cascadensis was found to divide and reproduce at nearly 63 degrees Celsius, 145.4 Fahrenheit or essentially typical conditions we usually find very close to some of these hydrothermal vents. And while most biological textbooks basically tell us that at 60 degrees Celsius pretty much no complex life should be able to do this because a lot of proteins inside eukaryotes just cannot function at these higher temperatures. This definitively establishes a new record for the upper temperature limit for essentially all eukaryotic life. And so here even scientists themselves report this as a mind-blowing discovery because the organism not only replicates at 63 degrees Celsius but it even remains active up to 64 Celsius and if the temperature increases can then start forming a protective coating to survive even higher temperatures reawakening when things cool down. And so essentially it seems to really like these hot conditions and has a lot of different strategies to survive in these very hot waters. But the question is of course how? what exactly is it able to do and what strategy does it use? Well, as I mentioned before, normally the main threat from high temperatures is really in regards to essential proteins just being unable to function. And so by studying this organism's entire genetic makeup or genome, researchers looked at some of the proteins it seems to produce in order to find out what's actually happening here. And the findings in this case suggest that this amoeba seems to produce proteins whose melting temperatures or denaturing temperatures seem to just be much higher than usual, or at least compared to other amoeba and other similar organisms. On top of this, the analysis of genes discovered an enrichment of genes related to what's known as proteostasis, a process involved in the maintenance of protein stability. And so here this little amoeba seems to be armed with highly specialized internal machinery designed specifically 
to keep most of its internal components functional and to continuously replenish and repair proteins even when under high thermal stress. But here it's also important to compare this particular amoeba to some of the previous extremophiles we've known about, able to survive high temperatures as well. Just because this will then make sense why this particular discovery is so special. And so here let's compare this to some of the world's most famous heat-tolerant life forms that seem to push thermal boundaries to its limit. And well, let's actually start with another known eukaryote, but in this case that does things in a slightly different way the famous Pompeii worm. It's actually this very strange looking creature, technically referred to as Alvinella pompeiana. And this is a very famous creature, and you can almost always find it around hydrothermal vents. And originally this was discovered back in the early 1980s, so approximately four decades ago, off the coast of Galapagos Islands. And so this is a deep sea polychaete worm that seems to only live near hydrothermal vents. And it's now considered to be the most heat tolerant complex animal known to science. So here this very unusual worm, that's usually about 5 inches or 13 centimeters in length, attaches itself to different walls close to these black smokers and usually thrive in sustained temperatures of 45 to 60 celsius, 113 to 140 fahrenheit. But sometimes their tails can even rest in temperatures that are much higher, being able to tolerate 80 degrees celsius or 176 fahrenheit, as long as their heads are in much colder water. Here we're talking about 22 Celsius or 72 Fahrenheit. But the trick to their survival is actually quite unique. Here everything seems to be linked to this unusual fleece-like cover they have on the surface that surprisingly is made out of symbiotic bacteria. In other words, they are not able to do so themselves, it's the bacteria that serves as a kind of a coolant. And so here the bacteria both detoxifies the fluid and even acts as a layer of insulation, allowing the worm to maintain relatively cool internal temperatures, with the average temperature inside being about 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. And so it's really only their outer cover that gets super hot. But how exactly do those bacteria on their surface basically do it? Well, this takes us to some of the most extreme life on the planet, bacteria. The organisms that hold the absolute record for the heat tolerance on the planet. And all of them are, of course, prokaryotes. Very simple inside, but also, of course, very ancient. As a matter of fact, today, most of the origins of life theories essentially focus on this type of life as being potentially the first on the planet to ever form, and very likely formed around these hydrothermal vents. But here, the most heat loving organism of them all seems to be an archaea referred to as Methanopyrus candelari. And not surprisingly, this is also once again found on various black smokers near hydrothermal vents, but also usually extremely deep at over 2000 meters of depth and surprisingly in even more extreme temperatures. Normally this archaea can survive and reproduce at temperatures of 122 degrees Celsius to 152 Fahrenheit. So this is technically what's known as hyperthermophile. It seems to thrive at conditions over 80 degrees Celsius. Although here at least one other bacterium known as Geothermobacterium fairy reducens can also survive temperatures up to 100 degrees Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit. So when it comes to bacteria we do have quite a few examples. But the reason they can survive these conditions is partly because they lack any complex internal machinery and have no organelles and no nucleus that would require constant maintenance. And the proteins they seem to rely on do not get denatured very quickly and can obviously survive much hotter conditions. And so basically all of their proteins are relatively primitive and can function at high temperatures. Although since we're talking about extremophiles, we might as well briefly mention tardigrades. Mostly because this is the most famous extremophile, as they're able to survive many different conditions all at once. But the difference between tardigrades and a lot of these organisms is that they can only survive those conditions, they don't really thrive in them. As in they can survive temperatures as high as 149 degrees Celsius, 300 Fahrenheit, but they're not technically extremophiles because they enter a dormant state and wait for conditions to improve before becoming active again. So essentially their metabolism completely shuts down and they become immobile, entering what's known as the tan state that makes them resemble these very tiny dehydrated raisins. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And while well, compared to these other examples, this is definitely something really exciting. Mostly because, as I mentioned before, this challenges what scientists thought was an absolute thermal ceiling for active reproducing complex life such as a typical eukaryote. Since in this case proteins are much more complex and more diverse, nobody expected an organism like this to survive in these very hot conditions. And as you can see, not just survive, actually thrive, 
reproduce, interact with other organisms, and basically live a normal amoeba life. And naturally this has quite a lot of implications for a lot of different biological studies. First, let's start with the obvious, astrobiology. Here this field relies heavily on trying to figure out Earth's extremophiles in order to figure out where we can maybe one day discover life somewhere out there. And since we now found a very complex type of life living at 63 degrees Celsius, it means that life could potentially establish itself in very hot environments somewhere else and possibly live on planets and moons with a lot of geothermal activity. And by the way, as we've discussed in many previous videos, we seem to have a handful of these moons right here in the solar system. And so there's a very high chance that if life formed somewhere else, and especially around these hydrothermal vents in oceans of, for example, Europa or Ganymede, there is now a very high chance that that life could have also become just as complex, resembling eukaryotes like this amoeba right here. Second, this also offers us some potential benefits in terms of biotechnology. For example, by sequencing the amoeba's genome and trying to figure out how exactly these proteins work and specifically finding heat-tolerant proteins, here scientists gain a very important tool in creating resilient proteins and enzymes that can then easily function at high temperatures in many different industries. For example, this could lead to advances in biochemical, pharmaceutical, textile, paper and even detergent industries where a lot of conditions involve high heat, but most proteins, especially when it comes to using bacteria to create something, just don't really function very well. And so by extracting some of the genes from these guys, there is a chance this might dramatically improve some of the most fundamental industries we depend on today. But even if it doesn't, well, this is still a very powerful reminder that life always finds a way. Yep, your mandatory Jurassic Park quote. And so complex life may be far more adaptable than we have traditionally given it credit for, and there are quite a lot of surprises still hiding, even in locations we usually take for granted, like this national park in North California. And here the original researchers even note that the stream where they discovered this amoeba was just one geothermal area, suggesting there could be even hotter forms of complex life out there just waiting to be discovered. But the incendio amoeba right here is a living proof that a lot of life, even complex life, continuously pushes back against these perceived boundaries of existence. And even though we thought we understood cells and understood the limits of proteins, these tiny fire amoeba just showed us that we still have so much to learn. And so on that note, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention, and you can find out more about this in one of the studies in the description. We'll definitely come back and discuss these extremophiles in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support us on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM it directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support the channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.